Hello and welcome to the third video in Quadcopter Build Series 11. Now, if you are a new builder and you've never built a quadcopter before, this isn't the series for you. Do go and check out one of my Quadcopter Building for Beginners series. They are far more detailed with every single step. This one is more just going through the steps and documenting how I'm building out this Armatan Gecko frame. This is designed for three inch props and I've spec'd it so that we've got some pretty top drawer components going in here. We've got the cam split mini 2 we've got tbs video transmitter we've got an fr sky receiver we've got speedix 25 amp escs and the co racing f4 mini flight controller and it's all going to have to fit inside this little chassis so I spent a little bit of time figuring out how everything is going to go together. Again, this Gecko is quite cool because even though it's very small and compact, it actually has two separate stacks. One for the 2mm bolts at the front that's going to hold the run cam split and a standard 20mm 3mm bolt layout at the back for the mini flight controllers and also the 4-in-1 ESC that I'm going to pop in here. Laying everything out, I think what I'm going to do is put the split um, above the receiver that allows me to route the receiver wires around in the classic way put them on with cable ties and that just gives a little bit more physical separation between the run cam split board itself and the power that will be running through the three wires that go through the center of the body that take the power from the ESCs to the two forward motors that gives me enough room then for the RXSR the receiver to go underneath it with loads of room so that's not going to hopefully be too close to cause any interference as well and then really struggling about where I was going to put the video transmitter but actually there's tons of room on the top deck above those two stacks so that's probably where that's going to end up as well. Now I've figured that out the first thing to do is to figure out where I need to connect all of the bits and pieces to. Now the manual for this thing is pretty good. Um, it's not really a manual, it's just a layout diagram. It's come with Betaflight 3.5 on it. We had a look in that in the previous video. Now what I need to do is just solder up and put a blob of solder on all the pads that I think I'm going to need. Now I'm going to follow this wiring diagram that I've created here uh, with one small exception. I am going to power the run cam split directly from the mains. I'm going to put it onto the battery terminals on the power distribution board 4-in-1 ESC that I'm going to install at the bottom. And the reason for that is checking with the manufacturer the 9 volt supply that's designed for the camera which would have been perfect if I was using another run cam so something like the Swift or the Eagle or something else like that it would have been perfect and fine. Unfortunately the split needs a little bit more power than that so I'm going to run it directly from the mains. I'm going to run the video transmitter from the onboard power distribution and we'll see how we get on with that. So now all the pads on the flight controller have a little blob of solder then it's just a case of wiring up each of the wires from the 4-in-1 PDB. Now the little trick that I did here is before I put the 4-in-1 ESC at the bottom I've quickly marked in pen with a number of dots which of the white wires coming out of here represent which ESC. It's very clear in the manual that you get with it which one is which. So one dot is motor one, two dots is motor two, etc. And that's going to make it a piece of cake for me to install. I'm going to route it around the side and again trying to keep the cables a little bit loose uh, but relatively neat. I don't want to transfer lots of vibration into the flight controller through having a tight cable and also a tight cable potentially will put strain on any solder joint that I make off as well. So I just need to make off those couple of connections. There's the ground and 5 volts that are going to power the flight controller. There's the four connections to the ESC that are going to run the ESCs and send those signals out. And there's also an additional one that's a current sensor that's going to allow me to keep track of how much current is being used through the system. Now I've got those two pieces together, uh, because this is going to be quite a complicated little build and taking things apart if I get things wrong is going to be exceedingly painful. The next thing I've done is soldered on the RXSR. Now this is the receiver. I've already bound it to the radio and made sure that that's okay. And I'm going to pop it here underneath where the split is eventually going to go. Held in place with a bit of double-sided tape. And I'm going to connect it up as per this diagram. Standard stuff. It's going to be running SBUS. I'm going to pop it on one of the spare UARTs so that it can send smart port telemetry back. And in fact, I'll probably need to change that when we get to the 
checking of the beta flight pieces because I think I did FR Sky in the last video and that's the old telemetry protocol, but we'll do that in a minute. Once that's all together, then I think it's about time that we just put a little bit of power on here, connected it up to beta flight and made sure that all the settings was working and everything's okay. Now I've checked it with a multimeter on resistance setting and that is all okay. So then plugged it into beta flight, use the motor testing just to make sure each of the motors turn in the right position and luckily they do and only two of them are turning in the wrong direction. 50-50 chance of getting them the right way around with the way that this is wired up. So I'll just go in BL Heli Suite and I'll swap those two around that aren't okay. Now I've done that and I know that that is working. So I know that the power system, I know the receiver's working, I know I can spin the motors. Let's put the split and the video transmitter in here as well. Now again, the split is gonna be a little bit of an interesting one here. Uh, I'm going to pop it over the top of the RXSR on the front stack. I'm gonna use the two extension pieces. All the bolts that I'm using here come in the split kit itself and I'm going to pop the camera in the front. Again, I'm going to connect up the video out of the split into the video in of the flight controller. And that's not a big surprise. And I'm going to also connect up uh, for, to a spare UART. I'm going to use UART 6 to control the camera itself. However, what I'm finding is these little splits are great. As soon as you apply power, they start recording. And then when you unplug the battery, it shuts down in an orderly way and actually takes the uh, closes the file so that you don't have to start and stop recording. As soon as the battery's plugged in, it's starting and you don't have to stop before you unplug the battery. So I'm probably not going to need those, but I'll make them off anyway in case I want to change that later on. So the only thing special I've done there, of course, is route the power onto the actual power distribution board at the back. Um, struggling to fit the supplied capacitor in here. Um, and I'm just kind of interested to try and fly it without the capacitor initially, just in test, because it would be interesting to see the differences potentially with and without a cap. So at the moment, I'm just going to carry on like this. I'm using an XT30 connector on the back of the model. I'm using 4S 650 milliamp power battery, 70C mini star batteries that I got from Race Day Quads. So shout out to those guys to power this thing. And maybe what I'll do is I'll pop a capacitor actually on the connector. Again, we'll see how the XT30 handles it in flight. Last job then is to solder up the video transmitter. Uh, the video transmitter we've actually installed on the top deck. Um, I had to undo a couple of screws and swap out the antenna that comes pre-installed on the TBS video transmitter with the one, this little micro kind of circular polarized thingy that's come with the kit itself. Swap those around, pop those under the little rubber mounting, and then all I need to do is solder up as per the diagram the wires that are going in there. Again, I'm going to solder up a couple of connections so that I can change the settings, power and whatnot using the stuff in the Betaflight OSD. So at this point, we are in pretty good shape. Now, I'm going to do one final check in Betaflight. Uh, this is an opportunity to change the FR Sky telemetry to smart port for that receiver and then just go through, double check that all of the central positions of the radio are at 1500 and just do one final big check. Also do a visual inspection to make sure that I haven't done anything dumb, that the positives are all going to the positive connections, the negative are all negative, etc. Once I'm happy with that, then let's put the top on, do all of the final connections off. I'm not going to install the props just yet, because what we're going to do, we're going to test all of the systems. So here we are, we have it on the bench. Uh, this is the video screen from my Fat Shark Transformers, and it's great for these kind of bench tests. So first thing to do is just double check that I haven't accidentally shorted anything out with the other soldering that I've done. So again, just double check the power connection with an ohmmeter to make sure it's not reading as a dead short, which is not. Then I'm going to power everything up, the screen, the radio and the quad itself. And I'm looking for a couple of things. First of all, does the video transmission system burst into life? Can I actually see an image? Which I can. Fantastic. And then, secondly, can I arm the quad and get the motors to run? And that works great too. 
Now, interestingly, if I just pop in the video here that was shot by the split as I just did that test, you can see that when the motors run, um, you can see the vibration just a smidgen, but it isn't terrible. Now, I'm going to put the props on here. I haven't balanced them at all, so this is pretty raw, but all I'm going to do is go into the back garden and give it a test hover because I think we're at that point. I think we need to bite the bullet. Just for those of you that are asking, with the battery that I've got on here, it's 252 grams so if i was being a little bit careful um, i could probably shave off a couple of grams by being a bit smarter maybe using plastic supports for the run cam instead of the supplied brass ones uh, but potentially could have this thing if you're a bit smart under 250 grams if you're living in an area where that's going to be important to you so out in the back garden let me fire this thing up and hopefully it will rise into the air and it does fantastic i'll switch here into the view of the run cam split in a moment you can see how that's running because in the next video we actually need to finish this build now lots of people would consider this final but i wouldn't quite yet there's a couple of things we need to look at we do need to see how it actually performs and how good the video in the fpv feed is whether there's any interference at all from the power system if we do need a capacitor we're going to have a look at the pids see how they need or if they need changing at all uh, this isn't a classic x um, it's a little bit of a compressed x so we might need to change one or two things change play with the rates but we'll do that in the next video i'm almost certainly going to have a much closer look at how the splits performing because we do need potentially to balance the props and if we're still getting jello in the HD feed, you probably won't spot it in the FPV feed, but with the HD 60 frame a second run cam split recording, if there's any vibration at all, it will show up. So we may have to balance the motor, so we might come back to that, and then we can do much more of a test flight. So join me in that next video in the series. Now this thing is all together, the work can really begin. If you found that video useful or like the content, then please hit the like and subscribe button down below. If you want to go the extra step, you can become a Patreon of the Painless 360 channel and help provide support for what I do here. All the videos created here are put into playlists, so if you're interested in a particular topic, have a look at the playlist, and they all are organised in there to make them easier to use. If you're not sure if there's a video for your particular problem or topic you want to know more about, then add Painless360 to the Google search term that you're interested in, and that should find the video, article, or content about the particular thing that you're interested in having a look at.